All right, traders, I am back again with another video. And in this video, we want to take a look at um, a trade setup that I called out yesterday during our Forex webinar session. We hold our members Forex webinar session every Sunday where we discuss the markets, talk about what's going to happen for the upcoming week if we see any trade potentials or anything like that. And we saw a couple opportunities. So I want to take a chance to look at one of them with you. It's the Euro Yen. Now in the Euro Yen, I'm going to be showing you how Ichimoku can help you to stay out of a bad trade by just looking at market disequilibrium. All right. Just that alone will help you. And also looking at the market disequilibrium comes from looking at that flat key. And so I'm going to show you how the market got too far away from equilibrium and we were expecting that pullback and we got that pullback. So watch this. Stay tuned. Here we go. All right, guys, before I get started, I'd like to just offer you some words of encouragement looking at um, Isaiah 43. Chapter 43, verse 1 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, I am with you. So God actually commands us not to fear or worry. The enemy uses fear to decrease our hope and limit our victories. God who created the universe cares about every detail of our lives. We belong to an all-powerful, all-knowing, victorious Father who cares deeply about us. When we meditate on this truth, it's hard to remain fearful about the trials we face. By focusing on God and how he considers us his prized child, redeemed ones, our focus naturally shifts from fear to faith. So Jesus himself expressed fear to the point of sweating blood. So God understands fear is natural. But whatever fear you are facing today, focus on the power of God who calls you by name and commands fear to flee from your heart. And may God bless you and your family. All right, guys. So you are looking at my chart, um, the Euro Yen. So I'm going to show you what we talked about yesterday in our session. I'll show you exactly how uh, put the recording up following this little intermission that I'm going to show you about um, the Euro Yen. So I'm going to take you from yesterday and bring you up to date right now. But what we'll do is we'll work our way backwards, right? So we're going to look at this Euro Yen and see why I called this trade setup. So first, basically, we really want to be trading with the trend. So when you look at this Euro Yen, you could see the trend really is overall bearish the long-term trend okay it's bearish all right so the primary trend is bearish but we had a we had a smaller trend which is basically a correction that developed here now i think we may be seeing the market maybe start to develop a new trend to the upside but not sure because these trends here this overall trend is really hard to break you know this is you're talking years here for a downtrend that was pretty bearish. Now you did have a long pullback here, all right, that lasted between June and almost what? A little bit over six months or so, all right? Actually, this almost lasted, this lasted over a year. This almost lasted into 2018. Okay, so you could see that from this point to here almost lasted into January 2018. Then you had the market back to um, moving back to this direction. Now, when we start, we're, we started our Ichimoku series, just posted that video out um, a couple of days ago, but you're going to learn about the wave theory with Ichimoku. So we're looking at basically the market moves in these end waves. So I'm going to look at the big pattern here and show you. All right. So what an end wave would be, would be this. We're just going to look at this end wave here. I'm going to show you. This is one down, which would be an I wave. You have another wave up, which would be a V wave, and then another wave down, which would be your N wave. All right, and then these waves, you could see this kind of looks like an N pattern, right? So 
looks pr pretty much like an end pattern. So these, that's what it's an end wave. So you're able to calculate where the le where the level is going to end for this leg, all right, to complete the full um, end wave pattern. And that's with using Ichimoku observation theory. So I'm going to add that really quickly for you. Now, you're not going to understand what I'm showing you, but I have these calculated and I put them in the inside of the Fibonacci extension tool and they're already calculated so it'll automatically bring up my levels for me. So N wave actually, if you never know, uh, Ichimoku N wave is actually gonna be a um, one to one ratio or, or measured move is which everyone knows. That will be a measured move so the market moves right back to this level here would be um, 98.562 would be the one to one ratio which means A, B, equals CD. So this AB leg would be the same as CD leg. That's basically some parts of Ichimoku that you're learning. If you understand that, you're starting to learn the observation theory. So I'll be getting deep into that when we start our um, second or third part, actually the second part of our Ichimoku series. All right. So overall, we think this move could come down to this point, right? So that's where you'll probably see before you see another big retracement like this. All right, so we're expecting the market to move down to this area here. Now, sometime the market doesn't get past this level, which is your two level, because you have one, two, three. And Ichimoku, this is your two level, which would be fluctuation. And when you get to that two level, if the market's unable to break through there, you probably see ranging. So that two level would be a level of support where the market starts ranging and you probably have an upper level. I don't know where your upper level would be. We would look for that. We would start from here, but then it probably might not be that, but we definitely would see our low level. And then if this was our high level, then the market would just be ranging in between here. Now, with that said, you could get develop different types of waves once you're in a, a ranging market, but I'm not going to get deep into that. I just really wanted to show you um, the overall market structure that I'm looking at long term with this market so this is how i'm looking at things long term but in the short term we looked at a trade i'm going to remove this and the reason we looked at the trade we couldn't even remove this leg here all right so now you just have that v leg that v wave that we're looking at when we add the other leg that's the end this is an i wave so when we look at this basically we're looking at and then you could see basically there's smaller end waves on this chart and it's going to be exciting when I get into that, but let me stick to the point right here. So when we look at this trade opportunity, what we were looking at was Ichimoku was basically, you could see the distance here. This isn't what we want to see. We don't want to see the market getting super far from Kijinsen, which is your um, equilibrium point. So that's going to be your midterm equilibrium point. All right. So your short term equilibrium point will be this Tinkinson. But the midterm is this level here. All right. So we don't want to get too far from that. And when we do, the market's more than likely going to correct itself. All right. But then another thing that really helped us to figure out that we wanted to be looking at an opportunity to go with the counter trend trade or, or the immediate trend move was that um, this level right here, you could see this level at about 122.697. This was going to be a resistance level for us, but the market kind of broke through that level. And I could have probably made it into a zone of different so, but I just put that one level there. And then the next level was this point up here at 126.820. Well, what I'm looking at was yesterday when we started our session, this candle was what we had. We had an indecision candle here with a big rejection. So basically we had this big rejection off of this upper level here and we had distance, the market getting out of equilibrium. The market does not want to be out of equilibrium. A, a perfect market is a market that's in equilibrium because you have equal buyers and sellers. But when it gets too far out, that's what you mostly everyone would call oversold or overbought. All right. Because you have here you have many buyers, but not many sellers. Well, eventually the sellers come into the market and you can see where they start showing a sign right here with the rejection. So with that sign and the disequilibrium uh, breaking that level and you see also see Kijinsen flattening out with that flat Kijinsen, that was major for me. So when Kijinsen starts flattening out, then I'm pretty sure we reached the top up here. All right, because now 
the market's going to start to correct itself. So when we thought about that, what I suggested was two things, two ways that we could trade this. First, the rejection and the indecision. So that we play, we trade level signals and triggers. So you have to have LST to make a trade level signal and trigger. If you don't have those three things, you don't make a trade. But we did have those three things when we're looking at this market because we have this level right here. All right. Which was this support and resistance level, this nice resistance level. The market kind of broke through, right? But then we had a signal. The signal was the rejection candle, the indecision candle, basically. And then the trigger would be the low of that indecision candle. We broke that level. So this is the level you could get into the market at 123.493 that I put right here. Now, my way of trading is a little bit different, okay? Because what I'm going to do, well, that's the way I would trade, but I would trade it a little bit safer. I would go down now to the one hour time frame or the four hour time frame. But I'm going to, I talked about going down to the one hour time frame. And what I want to see is the market retrace back to this level and then trade. All right. So when we look at this, we'll go to the one hour time frame. And you could see on the one hour time frame where this level was. All right. Basically, you could make it into a zone. You would pull this, put another level here. Let's put another level there. Um, so that we have a little zone. All right. And we're using this zone area for our trade. So we want to see the market break this level. All right. So looking at the one hour time frame, we want to see it break the level and then correct back to the level. That's when we'll trade. We'll be safer than just trading a break out of this level because then when it pulls back, more sellers we know come into the market here again, keeping the strength to the downside and eliminating strength to the upside. All right. So let's see exactly what we were looking at when the market started to open. We were in here discussing this market and what we waited for was this right. Well, not that. <laughs> that right there. So that's where you could have entered the market already because you already broke below this level 123, 493 that we talked about right here. All right. And you could have taken this breakout trade right here. Um, I don't feel to myself that this is the safest. Now with Ichimoku, definitely you could have taken this trade on a one hour time frame because you had angulation to the downside, which was strong. And you probably would have thought you would make it to the bottom here, which is your support zone of your resistance zone. So this would have been su the support level here where the market would have probably came down to and maybe corrected. But we look for a correction to come back to this level for us to get into a trade. I'm going to show you that I already called this here. This was the trade right there. We touched this level. Now we want to trade for sure. We want to put our entry in here and let the market trigger us in. With our stop loss, I like to start out good, but I'm going to trade with the fractals. So I would start my stop loss up at this point, but at least with Kijinsen. Now I give it some room to move, but I, I don't have to let it come to that point. But this was the entry that we wanted to get. We were shooting for a target on the daily time frame. Let's go back. We're shooting for a target a couple levels here. So you could see there's a support and resistance level right here. That's one point where we would be looking looking at right here. All right. So what is that? 121 is it? 021. And then we would be shooting for the next level would be this level right here. Your flat Kijinsen right there. All right. 119 at 119 416, right? That would be the level. And then overall back to this zone here, you got a flat cloud here. That's what we would be looking for. So we have our first level, which would be lining up with your Tinkinson level here. So maybe the market only pulls back to Tinkinson. All right. Where this level is here. If it doesn't break, if it breaks through, it's going to pull back to this flat Kijinsen back to equilibrium here at about 121.021. That's what we're going to be looking to trade to those two levels. And then if it can break that, we're going to look for this level. And then if it breaks that, we try to continue going with the trade. Right. But then we stay with the one hour time frame. And when I took you back, you could see it already broke. So I want to go back to the one hour time frame. Take that off the chart, go back to the one hour time frame. And I showed you where it started to break here and where it pulled back. So we broke, pulled back. This is our entry here. And then you triggered 
that's exactly where you're in the market. We know we want to get through that cloud and we broke through there easily. All right. And then you could see the market just continuing to the downside. Now, at this point, taking that trade at where we said here would have given us a nice profit of 110 pips trade. All right. So we called this trade out. It's not like we don't call trades out. We call trades out for members and we do it during our live session. And hopefully I'm um, hopefully members just write the things down. Sometime I'll post it depending on the entry. Um, at the time of the webinar, I couldn't post it because we didn't have our entry level yet because we wanted to break this level. This, once this candle developed here, we could post the entry because we're going to use this level right here as our target. So we would have definitely said 123.338 stop loss. And then our target is still going to be here at first target and then second target and then final target right here. All right. So let me show you what I was talking about during our live webinar session. So you can see the trade setups that we call at least just this one. Um, there's a couple that we call, um, we do this every Sunday members. And then throughout the week, if there's something special, we'll do it again. Um, most of the time these are not, these are, um, swing trades. So it takes a little while. We may have a trade, two trades in a week, three trades in a week, sometime, maybe none, depending on the market. A lot of times you get a market that ex that's extending like this. You have to wait for the correction because like I said, in order for us to trade, we need a level. We need a signal and we need a trigger without those things. We don't take a trade. So just because the market is moving, we need a level to get into those trades. So on the daily time frame, it would be really hard to get into these trades once it really moves like this. But I'll show you how you get into those on a lower time frame. All right. But right now, let's go back and look at what we were talking about yesterday. All right. Euro yen. Again, another one that needs to correct itself. We're at a high level here. Again, if I go to the weekly time frame, we have the same level. You can see that level right there. Same level that I got on my chart. Okay. But also there's another level that's higher. I'm going to go to and I'm going to mark it on the hourly time frame, on the daily time frame. We're past this level, which is this right here. So we want to see where the next levels are. There's a level. There's a couple levels that I could be looking at. Because I want to see where this market is going. It could be here, but I'm going to move it higher because we got resistance there and then support here. And I could make it into a zone, but that would mean that's where the market's going to go to at this point. But I think we're too far. We're getting out of equilibrium here and we're starting to flatten out. We're going to get a big C clamp. We got a rejection level here already. That's why I put this level here because I'm looking to short at this level. And I'm going to trade at least down to this point at um, 121.021. I'm not going to call this at this point because, let me see. We could, I don't want to trade mine this way. We could just put our entry at the close of this level at 123.493, right? So that would be this level. 123.493. And shooting for that target. Now, what I'm going to look for is wait for the four hour and the one hour. See if I could catch a better trade. Now, see, we didn't break this fractal yet. So what I want to wait for is the four hour, the one hour to close below these fractals. That'll be the first fractal break. And then I'm going to look for the return back to this level. That's when I'm going to trade the market short. All right. Because we're already getting signs that it's getting weak up here with this rejection. All right. And then we should see the correction back down to this area. Maybe Tinkinson, maybe Keatonson if we're lucky. And then we'll just wait after that. Okay. A C clamp is this. Watch. This stays flat. And this keeps going higher and higher just like a big C clamp. But it can't get too far away. Because when it gets too far away, even a little bit distance here, it corrects itself. You see on this whole chart, they don't get that far away. And when they do, they need to get back together. So the market's going to correct itself. All right. Um, so I'm going to watch the market. I'm going to see if I get my entry here. I'm going to see what we get. Then we're going to look for that short. 
All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. You see how we made some trade. Well, this trade call at least. And I posted another video a um, couple last week or so. And we had four trade calls, five trade calls on there. And those trades already well over a thousand pips on those four trades. We had five trades total. We lost one trade, stopped out for 67 pips or so. And the rest of them, they all exceeded over a thousand pips. So adding this trade and the couple others that we have this week, we're going to be pushing about 15 to 2000 pips this month, maybe. Okay. So we have to see what happens. We still can lose some trades. So let's see what happens and um, hopefully we're good to go. But this is a thing that you want to get involved with. This is something you want to get involved with, with us because, um, like I said, we have this session every Sunday, definitely have it every Sunday for members to be able to see what we're looking at for the Forex market, know where to get into trades without me having to even post it because we're already talked about it. And then the next thing is, um, you get your profit back, what you paid for the course, what you paid for the membership, $250. You get that right back already because you could have probably made that back on this trade here with depending on how many lots you're using. OK, but you could have made that money back and now you're trading free and you're good to go. But hopefully I'm helping you guys even the free stuff, you know, just being able to show you how we do this stuff here. I um, want to show you more technical stuff with Ichimoku. So stay tuned for that. And other than that, guys, hope you're enjoying this until next time. Have a great one. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.